Namaste everyone. We'll be starting in a few minutes at 10 to, uh, 10 30 sharp. And uh, today we have two eminent speakers, Professor K. R. Sedraman sir and Dr. Ramaviti sir. So we welcome everyone. And exactly at uh, 10 30 we'll be starting. I've just been checking up the live and other things. So everything is good. Nice to see you, Meena. So uh, we will be starting exactly at 10.30. We have 10 minutes. So uh, be with us and join us. Thank you so much.
Namaste, Vanakkam, Swagatam. Welcome everyone to the SBV Yoga Mahotsav 2022. And today we are on our second day of this International Yoga Therapy Convention that was inaugurated yesterday. We had a very successful grand performance at the heritage site of Gandhi Tidal in Pondicherry. And we had our Lieutenant Governor, Dr. Tamir Sai Soundarajan, Madam, inaugurate the event, following which at SBB we had a hybrid event that was inaugurated by Dr. Ishwar Basavaretti, the director of MDNAY, and raised by Dr. B. R. Sharmaji, the respected Vice Chancellor of Sri Sri University in Odisha. In the presence of our respected Vice Chancellor, Professor S. C. Parija, and Registrar, Professor A. R. Srinivasan. We had eminent speakers yesterday, including Yogacharya Sridharan, sir, who we had the privilege of honoring with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Along with that, we had Nritya Jagannathan, the Director of Studies at KYM Chennai. Dr. Vinay Chandra BK, Director Indica Yoga from Bangalore, Yogacharya Subramaniam, Principal of the Pyramid Spiritual Science Academy, Bangalore and Adhyatma Yoga. Along with that, Yogacharya Nidevasena Bhavanani of ICYR also was a resource person. Today, we are shifting into the completely online mode for the next week. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome and introduce my beloved teacher, my beloved mentor, Professor K. R. Sedhuraman, sir. We welcome you, sir, to today's event. And we are all looking forward to having you with us on this momentous occasion. As we know, the International Day of Yoga has been celebrated every year on June 21 since 2015. Thanks to the efforts of our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modiji. Every year at SBB, we have celebrated the Yoga Day with a week-long or two-week-long event. And Professor K. L. Sedhuraman, sir, as the Vice Chancellor of SBB, supported all our efforts in taking yoga to the patients at Mahatma Gandhi, to the students of SBB, and to the local community of Puducherry and neighboring areas. Professor Sedhuraman, sir, is one of the most eminent teachers of healthcare professionals in India, having served with distinction at JIPMA in the Department of General Medicine as the professor and then as the head of the department and running with distinction the NTTC at JIPMA for many years. And following that, served as the Vice Chancellor, sorry, sorry uh, Dean of Medicine and Senior Professor at AIMS, and then served with distinction for five years here at Pondicherry and Sri Balaji Vidya Peet, giving us all so many ways forward, especially salutogenesis, ikigai, and the integrated healing environment. Sir has put us on a trajectory that focuses on wellness rather than illness. Sir continues to serve Ames University in Malaysia as Dean, Faculty of Medicine and Senior Professor and continues to guide us as a mentor. A mentor who strives to bring about the best in each and every one of the mentees. Today, we are honored to welcome you, sir, on behalf of CITA that is getting upgraded into the Institute of Complementary Medicine and Salutogenesis. The uh, tree is starting to have some branches and flowers and maybe fruits in the future, the seed that you planted so many years ago. We welcome you, sir, and looking forward to hearing about your topic, a topic which is holistic and personalized healthcare 
using integrative and functional medicine. And when I requested sir to speak for us during this convention, he immediately accepted and he said, Ananda, I will take up a new topic so that I will have the energy and the enthusiasm to prepare for it. And that is a sign of a true master, someone who is constantly reinventing themselves and giving new dimensions for us to follow. Once again, we welcome you, sir, and over to you for this wonderful session that I am really, really looking forward to listening. Namaste, sir. Namaste, everybody, Dr. Meena, Dr. Ananda, and other VIPs, CITER uh, participants and all that. Um, actually, my crowd, I could have taken 20 more from uh, this institution. <laughs> but since it is a paid site, I didn't uh, dare share the Zoom link with anyone. OK. So yeah, I remember uh, when I joined in 2013, uh, the yoga therapy and uh, music therapy centers were small uh, cubby holes in uh, blood bank, inside, hidden inside blood bank. I, had to, I couldn't even find it out initially, then somebody guided me to discover, uh, because uh, Ananda was known to me from Jipmer days, wanted to see how campus child has grown. And uh, it is amazing to see in a eight, nine years time, the uh, immense growth of uh, yoga therapy center to CITER, first center of excellence, and then now an institution of uh, complementary medicine and salutogenesis. And the main reason for ch changing the topic is, I've already talked about uh, salutogenesis and optimal healing, I think four times in the past eight years. So if I again say salutogenesis, people, even this 14 wouldn't be there. <laughs> Probably only Ananda and Maina will be there out of old uh, affiliation and uh, therefore I changed the thing. I thought I'll introduce some concept like fa functional medicine and integrative medicine and actually I expanded the title. The title I wrote to Ananda was uh, spur of the moment and then actually I'll share the screen. The title is actually, it is already put up in ResearchGate and Academia for download that the number is given there. If you click that, it will take you to the research get uh, paper of uh, the same uh, PowerPoint as PDF. <clears throat> I hope you can see the slide and hear me well. Holistic and personalized healthcare incorporating yoga therapy. That is where today's focus comes in integrative and functional medicine. I am going to call it IM for integrative medicine and FM for functional medicine for today's talk. So uh, Ananda and uh, Dr. Meena had come to our beautiful campus. You are welcome once again now that uh, tourism is back. And as uh, they have seen, ours seen from air is a chakra concept. Uh, why I am putting it up is, it is, uh, I mean very much chakra is very much a part of yoga. So I wanted to, our founding father, uh, Tato Swami Velu said, from air it should look like a perfect circle. In fact, he specified also it's one mile. The outer ring is exactly one mile in length. I go for a walk every day. And that small yellow circle on top is my where I stay, that is Dean's bungalow. Actually, I'm speaking from there only now, online. Okay, so you're welcome once again. Maybe this November, December, we'll organize an uh, on-site conference. And um, in 21st century, uh, so much of pathogenesis is learned in uh, my healthcare professions that most are ignorant about salutogenesis. And somebody who is not ill comes, the doctor is flummoxed. He's totally like a, facing a googly bowler. You have a rare condition called uh, wellness, good health. Frankly, I'm not sure how to treat it. <laughs> they want to treat everything as a treatable disorder. So given a chance, even salutogenesis will be made into a pathology. So medicalization of society, unfortunately, is the name of the game in a, uh, in a market-driven economy. It is bound to happen. And it is for the same people in the civilization to put a stop and say enough is enough. And uh, there is a place for well people and there is a need uh, for wellness, which that doesn't 
depend on medication. So today's talk uh, uh, a bit repetitive in the sense some of the concepts will come back again and again when we talk about holistic healing. Cannot avoid that. I'm sure some participants are new. So curing versus healing, four factors of healing uh, from U.S. Wickenburg consensus, uh, that is Hazer Foundation uh, conference. Then optimal healing environment. Once again, I'll just touch uh, briefly and then go on to some stories on integrative medicine approach and functional medicine approach. Because initially I prepared a big lecture on that, then I thought no point. There are lots of cases, uh, instinctively many holistic physicians treat. So better to relate to them so that they get an idea of what it is all about. And then finally, a last bit, since it is an uh, academic institution and you are going to teach uh, and train people how to educate health professionals and uh, doctors in the making to be patient focused problem solvers. So in that, uh, the yoga therapy can be embedded. So piecemeal specialty is the bane of uh, 21st century medicine because uh, so much of specialization, it becomes more narrower and narrower. And uh, therefore, uh, holistic healing is rarely discussed in organ-focused specialty care. And uh, it is opposite of holistic medicine and uh, that is a focus of sociology, anthropology, complementary alternate uh, holistic practitioners and all that. So there has to be a, it's not that you stop uh, the scientific progress in evidence-based medicine, but it has to go hand in hand with holistic healing. This is family medicine chief. Family medicine is the only specialty now predominantly in US who are into integrative approach and uh, functional approach and a holistic practice. And he is one uh, role model for that. I just picked up uh, from his uh, article, Meaning of Healing. That is, healing means to acquire wholeness as a person and wholeness also means physical, emotional, intellectual, social and spiritual aspects of human experience. And as you know, WHO has incorporated it in its latest revision of health. And this story I like to keep sharing every year, definitely for several years until it gets into DNA of all the practitioners. Difference between curing and healing. This epiphany I had 35 years back when I, one of the yogis met me and said, healing goes beyond cure, doctor. Let us say we are chatting. Car is stolen now. And you find out during lunch hour that the car is stolen and you report to police. And using GPS, they locate it and get back in a day or two. So as far as the police is concerned, they have cured your problem. They have solved your case and everything is, uh, the diary is closed. Car found and uh, returned to the owner. And the fellow who uh, stolen the car is absconding, yet to be identified. But are you back to normal self after that? Now, when you are working here in the clinic, this is what he told me. While you are examining my chest, auscultating my heart, your mind is worried about your car. Is anyone trying to steal my car again and all that? So though you are cured of your issue, you are not healed because you are not the Professor Seth Raman of yesterday who never worried about the car being stolen. So only when you stop worrying about the car being stolen and become a normal self like you were yesterday and before that, then only you are totally healed. So that is the difference between mere curing and healing. And that really you know, struck a chord and that message he gave me 35 years back, I keep it and I've been sharing it with every batch of interns from 1993 onwards till I left Jipmer in 2006. And now I'm sharing with our dog, juniors here, uh, medical students in Ames University for 12 years, 11th year now. So the second one was in 1990 when I attended a WHO workshop on medicine and society arranged for uh, two weeks in Thailand. In that, this was discussed healing factors, Wickenburg consensus, a conference where 88 top physicians and others assembled and uh, organized by Kaiser Foundation. And they said, after a lot of discussion, they said 20% of uh, healing 
this is not curing, this is a healing, total healing, rational evidence based therapy, the scientific medicine which MBBS guys learn for four and a half plus one year, or one year. Here it is five plus one, five plus two, seven years. Whereas the remaining 80% is placebo effect, faith in the treatment, 35%, one third. Then faith in the system that you adopt, whether it's uh, modern Western medicine or Ayush or one of the components of Ayush, uh, that is faith in the system. Then last is faith in oneself or uh, supernatural, that is ability to bounce back from illness and hardship. So that is 15%. So therefore, uh, in the Western medicine, they learn so much about this 80%, the remaining holistic aspect of 80% is touched upon or ignored totally. And placebo effect because of randomized control trial is considered an unwanted effect. It is unwanted for control trials but not in practice as uh, later of course this PET scan proof came. Uh, this is one in the upper now, this is a normal uh, control and uh, you can see the middle one is a Parkinson. You can see that uh, red dots is much smaller. That means dopamine level is very low. And when placebo is uh, given, the dopamine is released almost uh, nearing normal as seen above. So this is a solid PET scan proof that placebo effect is not imaginary. It actually causes uh, recordable evidence-based biomedic uh, biochemical changes in the system. So this is in the basal ganglia of the brain. Okay, so like that there are several more. If you just do scientific studies in placebo effect, you will get uh, several. This is published in Science 2001, one of the very respectable journals. So uh, in the past, uh, in 21st century, in the past 20 years or so, postmodern voices call for maximizing potential of placebo effects associated with effective therapy. A successful doctor-patient relationship can foster a strong placebo response. So this is arguable. You can say it fits in more with the Hawthorne effect also. So anyway, that is faith-based healing response. And nocebo is opposite of placebo response. A good doctor-patient relation is a more placebo and anti nocebo and this is my own which i keep telling the interns every year in clinical practice unlike randomized control trial placebo is not an unwanted interference nocebo is unwanted whereas placebo is very much desired so then second is hawthorne effect caring as a beneficial force when employees perceived that employer cared, productivity improved. A classic Harvard management study in 1927, almost 100 years back. You can Google search and find uh, interesting stories on this force. But in healthcare, Hawthorne effect is relevant to all caring enterprises like healthcare. And patients do feel better when they decide to put them uh, themselves under care of an empathic physician, nurse or a hospital and um, there are scientific studies you can get the actual papers they are uh, free for download where they say more supportive the administrative staff of healthcare it's not only the treating physician or surgeon administrative support the ward boy the orderly the clerk who bills them or the receptionist who receives the phone call or ushers them to the doctor's chamber so more supportive they are, shorter the hospital say, less litigation, more patient satisfaction and uh, evidence based thing that their recovery is much faster. When uh, Dr. Kerr White lamented in 1996, he was one of the prominent players in the Wickenburg consensus. So eight years later, in one editorial he says, unfortunately healthcare providers and managers until recently ignored these seminal ideas. So in 21st century postmodern times, uh, at least I am personally glad that these are making a strong comeback. Starting with WHO definition being revised in 1984 in New Delhi summit, and it has been adopted later, quoted by Kayat in 98. Health is a dynamic state of complete physical, mental, spiritual, and social well-being. And this uh, sign logo is a universal religious symbol. 
all faiths of the world put together. The zero outside can be considered as an atheist or agnost <laughs> because he says nothing is real, it is all imaginary. So the outer zero also includes agnostic thing uh, described even in Rig Veda. So spiritual factor and health is an important component. So much so, WHO did a, a big study with uh, more than 5,000 participants in 18 countries across the world, quality of life and uh, relationship with spirituality, religion and personal belief. SRPB is the short form for that, spirituality, religion, personal belief. It correlated with all the quality of life domains. And uh, women naturally have uh, greater feelings of spiritual connection and faith than men. Men are notoriously unfaithful even in these SPRB matters and uh, SRPB matters. Then uh, less educated have more faith, more educated people are, they become more agnostic. And we need to assess our patients, spirituality, religion and personal belief because they affect their perceived quality of life. This is the comment from WHO and to foster that they put up this uh, field instrument, WHO quality of life, SRPB field test instrument, free for download. In fact, uh, you, you can uh, use it to study the spiritual and uh, uh, SRPB factors in uh, your own patients or students or anyone and publish it. No? It's a validated instrument. Okay, so next is my epiphone, epiphany or Eureka moment 3. It happened in the same uh, workshop in 1990. When I listened to a talk by Elizabeth Sachs, Professor of Anthropology, Medical Anthropology, and Joran Thompson, a Professor of Pediatrics from Karolinska. So they did a combined uh, study of uh, medical uh, treatment and finally their conclusion was this as a, mentioned as a simple formula. Joran Thompson presented that paper. Therapy is equal to intervention, that is what we intervene with the drug or surgery or whatever else, and associated with information that is meaningful to the patient and that uh, promotes the faith of the patient in the healing recovery process. So it is not just intervention, intervention plus informa understandable information and faith. So if you replace yoga there in the intervention, yoga therapy combines art and science of mind-body medicine to offer effective therapy in several conditions. And by giving the intervention that is body, mind-body related, and of course relevant information and promotion of faith is done by the yoga therapist. We'll see how it is done later in OHE. So that is the second next stage of my talk. Okay, enough about uh, curing and healing. So now we go from curing to optimal healing. That is what Guruji told me 35 years back. They are complementary. Both are essential. You can heal without uh, curing and you can cure without healing. But uh, neither of them are uh, totally effective. We will see some examples later. So we have to have healing processes that are preventive. That means retain health build resilience, that is salutogenesis, restorative, facilitate recovery. During healing process, again, once the illness is removed by curative therapy, full recovery and rehabilitation uh, and getting wholesomeness to the own uh, system, human body system, is again uh, restorative salutogenesis and palliative, where uh, disease cannot be treated like cancer or any other end stage diseases. We maximize function and well-being as long as we can. So one can heal even when recovery and cure are not possible and adopt healing, healing oriented care and approach to create OHE, optimal healing environment. The current trend is even in the West, in the West actually is very prominent now create patient patient centered optimal healing environment they prefer calling it as ohe rather than a hospital and a ohe the ward as this is a single room of a patient actual photograph this is how it looks beautiful scenery outside large windows that show the world outside 
and they feel part of it the room is a comfortable one and they have a they don't have to lie down in bed 24 hours wherever they are whenever they have energy and ability they sit and do normal day to day activities okay this is non optimal in contrast 4300 indians die daily due to poor hospital care this is non optimal and uh, as usual there is taxonomy of optimal healing environment also they say it has got four domains internal domain interpersonal domain behavioral domain and external domain and uh, all four if they are in sync then uh, it uh, it allows healing which is as important as curing okay so now we will look at one uh, domain at a time and see how yoga therapy can fit into that internal domain is developing healing intention if a patient comes with the intention of not healing and uh, forever remaining sick you know, for whatever benefit then anything that we do doesn't help so internally the, the horse must be willing to drink water otherwise giving water is of no use so that is what it means the patient or the client should have healing intention and they should have an expectation of healing hope of getting better understanding of what is wrong with them and belief that whatever therapist does will uh, help them and then experience personal wholeness in mind body spirit and energy and uh, yoga attends to a healing intention is promoted by meditation prayer and mindfulness and b uh, personal wholeness is uh, of course that is a uh, soul of yoga therapy attending mind body spirit and energy prana prana is india hindu name or indian name for energy and uh, chinese call it chi and uh, second domain is interpersonal domain cultivating healing relationship with the therapist communication compassion empathy social support and uh, healing organizations gives the leadership mission teamwork technology so that is the role of bala yogi as chief of the institution now a complementary medicine and uh, so it comes there interpersonal factor so individually therapeutic relationship for wellness and b is promote holistic healing through institutional leadership mission teamwork and technology third is behavioral domain practicing healthy lifestyles diet exercise relaxation and manage addictions and uh, lifestyle ultra distortions b collaborative medicine integrative person centered family centered and culturally sensitive so yoga therapist attends to a uh, by promoting satvic lifestyle lifestyle and b integrating well with western medicine so integrative integrative of course goes with integrative medicine or im and person centered medicine is otherwise known as functional medicine where you focus on the individual n is to 1 rest plan it is called for each individual patient client you focus on the, that person's unique uh, status and uh, make a individualized tailor made prescription that is person centered and yoga therapy also can do that and of course family centered that's why family medicine strongly adopted these approaches the lastly external domain building healing spaces color light art architecture aroma air music and sound the minute we enter the sighter symptom floor the whole thing is different the, the smells of uh, incense sticks and the sounds and all the uh, drone sounds you know at um, our om chanting all that it creates an atmosphere and uh, fostering ecological sustainability as far as possible be eco friendly sustainable energy efficient and with the nature of course uh, yoga therapy can easily adopt this sattvic guna and symbiosis with nature so therefore uh, optimal healing environment is a integral part of yoga therapy and yoga therapy is a integral part of any institution wanting to build optimal healing spaces 
and this is a, an example of a spider graph of a healing environment of an individual once you are trained in this you can draw the graph on where a person stands like uh, the green um, pentagon or whatever is uh, inside is where the patient uh, client was when the person joined and uh, the blue is the with the treatment after two weeks or three weeks when the review first review is done the improvement has been plotted so and it uh, shows all this optimal healing uh, external domain internal domain behavior interpersonal domain and then you can uh, see their strengths weaknesses and uh, focus on trying to ma maximize every aspect of their healing processes okay so spider graph is very useful this uh, type of graph is also called as radar graph and uh, modern excel sheets the recent versions allow these graphs to be plotted it is part of the package itself so now story time my uh, major part of the talk is over clinical scenarios that show the role of im and fm in case management integrative medicine and functional medicine so medically unexplained symptoms mus uh, this is the information given to patient where you have all the symptoms but your doctor says you are normal and you are not alone because 25 to 40 percent of cases seen in primary care general practice belong to this medically unexplained symptoms to get better you should understand what the problem is and your doctor cannot label it because all tests are normal without a medical table without a medical label others think may think that your problems are imaginary and lack legitimacy or it's all in the mind it's your uh, you're a neurotic guy or you're a mad fellow no, it depends on how they pejorative they want to be and functional and integrative medicine help those with mus this is from royal college of psychiatry health advice i have downloaded this there is a huge uh, big list if you want to know more you can visit the site MUS syndrome, I'll, the, I think two cases I'll just put forward. This is, I've seen this about 40 years back. Repeated functional seizure in a Muslim boy. Uh, organic causes were ruled out. And uh, I have observed it personally when he had it uh, clearly what was called at that time as hysterical. That is not an accepted word now. For, now currently they are known as histrionic seizure functional seizure for which there is no organic basis like a brain tumor or a tuberculoma etc the family refused psychiatric consultation saying that my son is not mad so what does the person do i was actually managing this boy for a few months when i was posted in psychiatry so i gave a, a referral note to the traditional muslim healer saying that we have observed him this is clearly not an organic fit it's only a some uh, histrionic stuff so therefore can you heal i understand that they are called sahirs i'm not sure whether that is a correct word used in india now sahir and uh, after traditional healing practices they uh, that person did for uh, several weeks uh, the father came and reported the boy was fully controlled so uh, below i have given a reference not to this case but similar cases of uh, spiritual healing methods that South Asian Muslim community adopts. So this is an example of that, which I have experienced, but this is the experience uh, documented in UK. And uh, surgical success, uh, according to the surgeon, but remain spiritless, or uh, if you want to be in yoga therapy mode, low in prana energy or chi energy. So, 30-year-old preclinical tutor uh, had mitral valve stenosis. She was performed um, mitral valvotomy. And the uh, surgeon reported a good outcome and it was confirmed by echocardiography. However, postoperatively, she continued to be in low spirit, non-functional, stayed at home, did not rejoin duty after the end of the medical leave. And uh, mental health consultation, she said, I am not mad and refused. Then what do you do? Holistic family physician referred her to the pastor of the church since uh, he knew that she was deeply religious and uh, 
goes to church regularly and reads Bible every day. And the pastor in the church helped her regain confidence over the next three months through prayers and motivational spiritual counseling. Then she was back on job as tutor in microbiology, went on to do PhD later. So surgical success was spiritless, where integrative approach with uh, faith healing by the church uh, person, clergy helped. So integrative medicine is therefore an appro approach to wellness that combines conventional traditional western medicine. It's not that we didn't do mitral valvotomy, she needed that, valve was stenosed tight, so it, uh, prayer cannot open it up, it has to be done by a surgeon who can mechanically open it or now by a cardiologist who can open it with a balloon and uh, all that is conventional but in addition to make them wholesome again and to get the healing process complete, complementary approaches that are not part of traditional western medicine has to be adopted and included in uh, if you are an ethical practitioner who is interested in patient wellness, it has to include this chiropractic therapy or yoga therapy, meditation, faith healing, etc. So this integrated medicine wheel is from um, university in the USA. I forget what it is. I think US, um, I forget the name. I don't want to guess. So this wheel is from them. Um, in the family medicine, they have a posting integrative medicine where they expose them to all these other options as a complementary to conventional treatment. Need for IM, another case, school principal with asthma uh, was given treatment and pulmonary function was not bad. So scores were good, but yet that person was depressed. What is the point in living like this? I am head of a large school, but I can't even breathe. You claim my lung function is good, but I don't feel energetic. No? He was like this cartoon on the right side. Hanging head, spiritless and uh, always clouded functionality. So lung function normalcy is not same as fully functional human being and a healed human being. But he is one of the early cases I referred to Dr. Madan Mohan. I don't know if he is in the thing. Dr. Madan Mohan Prakru was the one who made him all right. And uh, they didn't have a, even a yoga therapy space in Jipmer those days. So I, I used to run respiratory clinic and I emptied one room and said, this is yoga therapy, you put two mats and start. So he was one of the early birds to get uh, help and he really made a big improvement and this is what he says after uh, about uh, two or three months. I feel fine, I wake up early morning, no longer dread the day, I love uh, teaching, I still need all the puffs and pills. The evidence-based therapy is still there but I am fully functional now. So that is the beauty of integrative medicine. You combine the evidence-based curative approach along with healing practices of complementary system to give a holistic care. Then what is the difference between IM and FM? They are actually complementary to each other, very difficult to dissect it out. Integrative, but the philosophy is slightly different. Integrative medicine seeks to understand the individual as a whole and apply many form of treatment to improve wellness, to make them functional. Therefore, functional medicine is an integral part of integrative medicine along with other complementary practices. Whereas when you say functional medicine, the focus is on creating individualized therapy tailored to treat underlying cause of illness of an individual which may not need medicine at all. I will show some example. So then it will fit in with functional medicine. Now with the genetic basis and uh, cytogenetics and all that, N is to one approach. That means every human being uh, or uh, organ cells of the human being is unique and you can tailor make individualized drug. So that is the current approach. Personalized medicine is a part of functional medicine. But I am giving more simplistic example. The approach that one condition can have many causes like raised BP can have several causes. Uh, and similarly, one cause can have medica, many conditions. A person has a uh, rise, uh, some elevated cholesterol. They can have so many, so many other complications, stroke, heart attack, other um, 
peripheral vascular disease etc etc so one cause can have many conditions and one condition can have many causes so that is how they approach and they call it go to eat framework gather facts organize information tell client means sharing information with them then order means ordering the sequence of intervention according to the uh, perceived need of that particular client initiate treatment and track progress so these are uh, followed to unidentify to identify unhealthy patterns find root cause of the problem create personalized unique solutions that include treatment and lifestyle modification so there one or two stories to clarify the point cardiac cripple despite successful coronary artery bypass just like that uh, lady with mitral stenosis this man had a fully functional accountant in uh, gulf lost his job because he was detected uh, to have ecg changes during annual check and he was sent home relieved from job saying that unfit for job because ecg shows st depression go home and uh, if you get cured you come back so he was sent off so he came to our center i was in trivandrum at that time underwent cabg where five grafts were placed post operative check revealed that four were still functioning but in the extra one for a safeguard they put it was distal one and it got blocked so we tried telling that person so it didn't matter the four out of five is good enough all that but he said i came walking and now you made me a cripple out of me and uh, walked out on din walk out he went home on a wheelchair and then uh, two subsequent uh, follow ups also he came with a wheelchair for two months then the uh, next follow up he walks in like this wearing suit tie and all that doc please check me up and issue a fitness certificate suddenly then we are <laughs> <laughs> i was seeing him all the time i was feeling my sorry that fully functional man unfortunately ecg was treated and the, he was made a cardiac cripple i was happy to see him again back with energy this time he did treadmill exercise re reached target heart rate and got his fitness certificate i got it issued for him that day then before he left i asked him hey surprise how you returned to fitness so soon then he said the company in dubai sent me a message that they'll be glad to take me back if i can prove my fitness so my question to my colleagues in the cardiology in the next week i reported this and told them what made him functional is it your cabg or is it the job offer <laughs> so uh, it is beyond i am not saying he didn't need cabg he was a fully functional man here cabg was done to prevent a massive heart attack from happening maybe 2 years later 5 years later we don't know when it might have happened but in a, by in order to prevent his future heart attack we have created a cripple out of him and it is a return of job that made him functional so this is a classical example of functional medicine the bypass didn't make him functional the job offered it so ebm and personal led therapy one more this is even more simple a physician uh, gets ectopic beats 24 hour recording only shows a few atrial ectopic and declined any antiarrhythmic drugs for symptom control but what that person did is kept a mental diary and after a few instances found out that if that person takes a strong cup of tea plus drives in a traffic soon after tea this uh, ectopics appear so if he now what he does is using n is to one approach stops driving if he drinks tea and avoids tea if he must drive he drinks coffee a coffee or a, some other drink instead then he has been past uh, many years he is reported to me that no recurrence of ectopic thereafter so this is a classical example of functional medicine in, uh, in an excellent example where just awareness of what is going on in the body and then find a unique solution then some more uh dr ananda i may exceed two or three minutes i think you have to pardon me for that yes. some three four more stories are there most of the facts sir most okay hex effect 80 year old farm worker with chronic hookworm anemia obviously a whole life he has been having only hemoglobin of 4 or 5 grams and fully functional 
but recent onset of symptoms, fear of death, etc., etc., he was admitted. Then at the time of discharge, he, uh, he was asked, hey, Tata, you have been uh, having this hukwam forever in your life. You are a barefoot farm worker all your life. I am sure it was there uh, even uh, when you were young. But why suddenly you got all these symptoms and uh, got admitted? Then uh, he thought and then after some time he said, um, long ago, so some 60, 70 years back when he was a small young fellow, somebody had uh, seen his uh, palm history or something, palm and said he has got a condom or crisis at the age of 80 and if it uh, is crossed, he will live till 90. He had forgotten it also because we asked, then he uh, thought, thought about it and remembered, oh that is the reason I actually, I also didn't re remember that, it wasn't subconscious. So this is called hex effect, like voodoo and all that, black magic, evil eye, they are all based on this hex effect. Very interesting. You know, Google hex effect, you'll get several stories. And uh, it's an example of nocebo response, opposite of placebo. Negative. Self-induced hex effect. Father is a... I'm treating this person even now. Father is a smoker and they had a heart attack at the age of 70 and passed away at the age of 80. And 25 years later, son is now nearing 80, 70 years and has fear that he is going to get a non-smoker but he has got a fearful thing that at the age of 70 like his father he is going to get a heart attack and because of anxiety he gets uh, now he has got heartburn due to reflux and then uh, it causes some ectopics now and repeated every week he will take 3-4 ECGs consultations goes on and on on and on and uh, there is no end. So self-induced, I have tried to explain uh, to him about hex effect and all this nocebo response, but it is still going on. Next one, even more simpler, hex effect 3. Six standard boy, a boy in six standard was about 11 years old, was uh, labeled as Duchenne myopathy. That is a very serious form of uh, uh, muscle weakness, progressive weakness, what uh, uh, people had uh, get and they die uh, early and uh, was uh, given uh, pro poor prognosis. So what happened is the fully functional boy was only had a little bit of uh, thing, he couldn't play uh, football and games like that, otherwise he was uh, studying well. Stopped schooling and virtually sitting uh, like a cripple at home. Then I happened to see this person when he was 13 or 14, re-examined and it was only Becker's myopathy which is a much milder form where they can live till 35 to 40 years without any difficulty. Once I changed the diagnosis to Becker myopathy, rejoined school, become a bank officer and I didn't know that. This I had seen in Jipmar in 95 or something. Some two, three years back when I went from here to Pondicherry, I met him in uh, this thing, front of casualty, when a 30 year old man came and said, do you remember me? I was the boy you said Becker Mayapati, I am now an officer in bank and uh, he is fully functional. So just the classical hex effect, you will uh, say you are going to die, they will die. Okay, so functional medicine is a very complex procedure process and uh, it goes beyond evidence-based practice to unique uh, solution for each individual, unique client that we face. So how do we educate uh, this to our next generation of doctors? Holistic approach to individualized problem solving. If the thing is to adopt the science called problemistics, not taught formally now. Even if you Google, very hardly few references are there. My PowerPoint, you will get a citation, but you can't access it because that link doesn't function anymore. I think I'll put it up again. Science of dealing with problems in a holistic manner and uh, development of well-being. And it is not just problem solving. In medicine, we only teach problem solving. But see, there are four steps, two before, one after. Problem framing, what is the context we are talking about of the problem and finding a holistic approach. 
like that uh, drinking coffee, uh, tea and going in a traffic. The context has to be framed. Because that person was a doctor, he could uh, frame the context and try to make a mental diary and find it out by holistic approach. An appropriate resolution was very simple. If you drink tea, don't go to town in uh, traffic. And if you want to go, then don't drink tea. A simple solution. And acting, systematic action. So for, uh, find the context, have a holistic approach, find appropriate resolution, and then put it into action and see the response. So uh, we as teachers, whether we are, teach yoga therapy, music therapy, or any treatment, modern medicine, we have to be holistic problem solvers to teach our students effectively and authentically. And, sorry, um, uh, the problem experienced by the client uh, can be biosphere related, that is infections, etc., involving nature and environment. Or it can be social, like mental health disorders, anxiety, etc., depression. Or it can be technosphere, tools and artifacts. We put a pacemaker and that malfunctions. We put a uh, dental implant and that uh, keeps giving repeated infection, etc. So, tools and artifacts done in, put in by modern medicine, that itself can cause this. Hydrogenic problem, impact, implant malfunction, etc. Okay, so Rahim Tula, a famous cardiologist in USA, his quote is there in, uh, I think, uh, the famous uh, standard textbook of cardiology. It is there in that Braunwald, I think, says, you remember when you are replacing the valve for a heart valve surgery, you are not uh, curing the fellow, you are only replacing rheumatic valve disease with prosthetic valve dysfunction or disease. So you have, you have to remember that it can cause implant malfunction for the rest of that person's life. So don't take it lightly, technosphere, often ignored. So, this is the last slide, I think. Problem knowledge coupling for unique N is to one solution is possible if we train ourselves and train our students on right side of that uh, aquamarine uh, green or aquamarine blue uh, circle. Current knowledge about this problem is evidence-based approach and the yellow uh, ellipse. All the queries to ask about the unique patient who is the individual who has this problem, patient-centered approach. And you combine both, everything of concern about this patient having this problem. So that's why he gave so many stories where each one is unique and uh, has got a unique solution. And uh, to train, you can adopt this functional medicine matrix. I don't have time to explain that. Uh, the whole history is elicited in a holistic manner, seeing all factors related to that person's problem and uh, seeing whether condition has got many causes or uh, one cause is de develop many conditions and all that, work conditions and cause. So what happens in the rest of 21st century? Advances in PET scan and other neuroimaging and also genetics will create uh, insight, provide insight into an individual's own natural healing capability. And, and any to one solutions will be possible we will also unravel the secrets of placebo effect and other effects like Hawthorne effect and spiritual factor. And then we could offer evidence-based holistic healing, incorporating these endogenous healthcare healing forces and uh, combine the art and science of healing practiced by uh, various systems of healthcare practices, Western and Irish. Okay. So let all the healing forces work in harmony to help suffering humanity. And let innovative academic centers like SBB and the newly formed Institute of Complementary Holistic Medicine for Salutogenesis accelerate this process of harmonizing. And our goal for future is to pro produce enlightened integrative medical professionals who can integrate healing arts with evidence-based rational therapy. Thanks a lot for your listening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was uh, really the uh, most amazing, amazing uh, presentation, sir. You know, I, uh, I, I think that the 
the uh, issue we have is you know we could go on listening to you because what what we find is that every slide and every word opens us up to a new dimension and i was just thinking you know when you talk about each of these concepts and bring it back to that center you come back to that center which is integration that center which is bringing things together that center which is saying how can it all work together rather than be piecemeal i think it is just such a such an inspiration that i i wish that we could forever forever have your blessings so that we can always take this forward uh, i would like to uh, just point out that there have been some beautiful comments uh, someone who's identified as server i'm not too sure who it is uh, i suspect it is someone i know but the future belongs to integrative and functional medicine we are fortunate to have champions like ars sir i think this is a true statement that would be echoed by each and every one we have from dr prasida of kaivalya dama thanks a ton for such an amazing talk really an eye opener and uh, in this uh, zoom we only have those who registered but on youtube we have it also going and there are quite a few people dozens of people watching it on youtube and facebook so uh, more and more people are getting this really thank you so much sir and uh, it's it's just inspiring sir that's all i can say shashtang namaskar i'm always uh, i would yeah. request dr meena to just say a few words because uh, you know she she also adores you totally now before that thanks for giving this new idea because i spent almost one month studying all these background documents i learned a lot Uh, in the on in the process and then also my mental diary of uh, the cases seen 40 years back how it fits into this holistic approach you know retrofitting lot of retrofitting has been done <laughs> okay meena <laughs> thank you so much sir vanakkam all so as usual uh, another you know enticing and inspiring uh, you know we were so eager to look uh, and looking forward to listening to you as usual because of all the anecdotes and stories that you relate to each of the topic which makes it so uh, you know like uh, retention in the uh, mind is always there uh, especially the story that you keep talking about uh, the curing and healing the car being sto uh, stolen uh, how it affects you know uh, and how long it takes for the healing to happen so uh, the the functional integrative as you were explaining so i think this is the future and uh, thank you so much sir for such a wonderful uh, presentation again we have lots to learn from this and uh, all the stories that again you know connecting the medical aspect with the humanistic approach and how the holistic uh, healing can happen when you combine these two together uh, and not just one kind of an approach like you said the intervention plus the information given and the faith you know the prayer everything put together uh, brings out the healing factor promotes the healing factor in each and everybody in their own way uh, all the interpersonal all those four domains that i think we need to uh, start inculcating in our uh, uh presentations also the internal interpersonal behavioral and external so all these factors and the other questionnaire you were talking about sir what is that questionnaire sir who spirit uh, uh, the, the questionnaire which you were uh, saying that we could also try to you know with yeah. the religious factors and spiritual factors personal beliefs and all were uh, you know part of the domains in that so next target maybe we will try to get that questionnaire and start uh, applying it also at siter so thank you so much sir for uh, this you know approach that you have always put in us um, the other thing that i would always admire about uh, setu raman sir is his you know 
simplicity and such a down to earth attitude uh, i have never uh, had anybody else uh, as that you know the father figure with whom you can just be despite the fact that he was the vice chancellor we could walk in we could talk to him always you know ready to hear uh, listen and give us you know uh, the the proper uh, advice or commands or which is again good for us uh, you know to get it better make it more qualitative and uh, that kind of a correction that you had given put us on track so thank you so much sir for being this role model always uh, looking forward to you know being with you and uh, any time every time whenever we message we get a beautiful reply in one way mm -hmm. or the other thank you so much sir means a lot to have yeah. somebody like you um, in in our life sir thank you okay all the best to you thank you bye thank you so much sir and as a guest the comment had come from dr b v atkoli sir i guessed it was him and the beautiful comment he had made and when dr meena was talking i was reminded that the true signs the hallmarks of greatness can be said to be simplicity humility and accessibility and all three of these we find enshrined in our dear kars Thank you so much, sir, for this inspirational talk and your inspiring words on this. Namaste. Namaste. Bye. We now go on to the second talk for today, and we have with us our dear Dr. Rama Reddy, sir. Dr. Rama Reddy <laughs> is one of India's very, very eminent psychiatrists he runs a hospital called the manasa hospital and he has been awarded the bc roy award the bc roy award which is one of the top most awards when we talk about the medical field in india sir has numerous academic degrees to his name in fact he has a record for the most diverse academic degrees in one individual and yet at the same time retains the simplicity authenticity the accessibility the humility to keep on learning and i lovingly refer to ramavati sir as a son of goddess saraswati herself he is truly a child of the goddess of learning so inviting you sir to give your presentation which is looking at yoga therapy and acculturation challenges and strategies so over to you sir am i audible sir yes sir yes sir sir is my screen now visible yes sir yes namaste everybody thank you very much for giving me this opportunity today i am going to speak something on yoga and acculturation challenges and uh, strategies and i welcome you all for this uh, this session i am very fortunate to be a scholar of uh, sri balaji vidyapeet although it is a deemed university nat a plus uh, plus i am very fortunate here acharya devo bhava let me pay my respects to my acharya my guide Anand Balayogi Bhavanani ji by offering him a digital bouquet. My Saha Acharyas, uh, 
डॉक्टर मीना रामनाथन जी एंड डॉक्टर दयानिधि जी आई पे मै रेस्पेक्ट टू देम let me pay my respects to the authorities of uh, sri balaji vidyapeeth university to the chancellor to the vice chancellor to the registrar and the vice president of the research and let me pay my respects and uh, best wishes to all the cyter team who are really working there and i am enjoying sitting in the chair here for uh, having that uh, the hard work there and let me pay my respects to so many great people who are uh, offering their lectures the intellectual sharing here just now we had the opportunity to listen to the great legendary personality seth raman ji and uh, let me pay my respect to them okay coming to the point uh, the menu card here is what is culture what is acculturation and its characteristics what are the challenges in relation to yoga therapy and what are the remedial strategies so this is these are the points uh, which i am going to deal in this uh, short lecture so what is this culture it is a way of life of uh, a group of people including uh, their attitudes values beliefs arts science or uh, the modes of perception habits of thought and activity culture is something like uh, amalgam of arts beliefs customs values institutions inventions language technology politics economy and food everything took that the whole the whole thing of uh, the the life what the people of the society wear what the languages the people speak what kind of work they do and how they govern themselves what they prepare for their food and where they live so all these things come under uh, the culture so how they judge from right to right from wrong uh, how they learn the uh, culture through language watching imitation shared with members of society and passed from one generation to the next culture of a society means the total way of life of the society culture is that complex whole that consists of everything we think do and have as members of society so uh, when we just put them into a single slide culture has its utility culture is learned culture is social it is shared it is transmissive and it is continuous and cumulative it is consistent and interconnected it is dynamic and adaptive it has distinct entity it is gratifying then coming to the acculturation the acculturation means when somebody who belongs to one culture he gets exposed to another culture somebody from india he may he goes to us or uk or australia there he will have the culture shock because he is not accustomed to certain base there acculturation is a process in which an individual adapts to the other culture for example the person who is belonging to this culture when he is put into the other culture he has to adapt to that culture so that adaptation process we call it as acculturation sometimes one person goes into the other culture or the culture is uh, imposed on him either of the ways it happens the stages of culture shock are initially it would be an excitement stage later it would be disenchantment the initial excitement would go away and he faces the crisis and uh, uh, and uh, uh, the third will be the resolution stage and the fourth will be the adaptation becomes uh, a a positive adaptation like with the effective functioning the culture shock because of his mental state he will be having uh, he will be facing varying reactions something initially like anxiety 
and associated uh, phenomena like uh, uh, the physiological phenomena associated with it and he may feel uh, denial he may get uh, fatigue like he may antagonize the things and he may get the rejection insensitivity and uh, so on the acculturation certain models are proposed one is segregation the other is assimilation the third one is integration and the fourth one is marginalization let us see what these are segregation means here the person he keeps his culture uh, uh, as it is and although he is placed in some other culture he won't be just budging at all he will be segregated and he will be living on his own see this person who wears the indian uh, sampradaya uh, clothes and all even if he is put in uh, western culture also he will be maintaining the same thing without adapting to that one and the other one is the integration here the integration means both the cultures he adopts that means he will be looking uh, he will be adopting the sampradaya in his place and he will be adapting to the other culture during the workplace or so so bicultural thing we can find uh, in integration that means integration is a better way of uh, uh, accommodating to that one in assimilation when the new culture he has been expo- he has been exposed to the new culture he adopts totally to the new culture and he leaves the old culture and uh, follows that one in marginalization what happens is he just leaves his own culture and also he doesn't adapt to the other culture also he will not be giving even a iota of respect to both the cultures and he will be living on his own so these are the four ways four models for acculturation now coming to the yoga therapy part uh, we'll see which one ad- which one is applicable for us segregation segregation is not the way because one maintaining his own culture without adapting to that one is not a good thing marginalization leaving his own culture and not adapting to other culture is also not good thing assimilation of course it is the best thing for example coming to the culture and adapting fully to the new culture that is a, the ideal or utopia like integration is adapting to both for example uh, somebody coming to india and assuming the name something like uh, asoba priya uh, or uh, sangeeta and so on so adopting a name that is uh, adopted to the culture at the same time retaining the old thing sangeeta lara biyagi or uh, bharata bill francis so that means there, there is integration that means they are retaining their own culture at the same time adapting well to the new culture so that integration assimilation means totally leaving everything and coming here and becoming one nishilananda or uh, uh, and leaving everything uh, the roots at all so that is assimilation so these two things could be positively applying for yoga therapy so what are the adaptation strategies one is the making personal contact with host culture and learning about the host culture and also adopting the ways and doing really not the theory or uh, uh, reading some books coming to acculturation in relation to yoga therapy yoga is a big system yoga is almost the universal system we can say super system yoga therapy is a minuscule of that one unfortunately yoga therapy is given a big thing and uh, as if uh, the yoga is uh, uh, somewhat uh, ancient uh, outdated thing people would be thinking but yoga therapy is a part of that one and the goal of yoga is the harmony and peace and uh, individual consciousness uniting or joining or realizing the supreme or uh, the global consciousness so that is the ultimate goal of that one whereas it is a by product so many by products should be there in the sugar factory it's not only the sugar so many other things like molasses and all other things come but we don't give importance for molasses we give that that's okay that is another fruit similarly here also cure for diseases is a by product four targets groups it's a, our our uh, acculturation one is about the non indians non indians getting exposed to yoga and how do they feel how 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 to get acculturated and the non hindus belonging to other faiths 
and health professionals of modern medicine they also require acceleration because it is a new thing uh, modi government has started so many things and all ayush is uh, almost uh, impinging on them even the first time bbs also they started uh, yoga classes and what is this ultimately are the angle fingers so health professionals of modern system they they have to get acculturated and also the general public and the common people and the people of other disciplines who are having who require acculturation so here i am following the our, uh, our standard model heya hetu hana and upaya so these four things i am i am trying to apply to our uh, problem here our acculturation problem heya so heya is uh, as we all know that it is the problem so what is the problem like the problem here is yoga has become popular and spread globally even well before the unveiling of iyd iyd has come just a few years back but even before that so many people like uh, geetananda uh, uh, bk ayyengar krishnamachari or uh, uh, swami rama or uh, patabi joys so many people they exposed the other countries with our yoga so so much is has been done for uh, decades together or maybe even centuries together that is happening but some i repeat i repeat again some not all some yoga masters from india went to the west instead of standing up for what yoga is they modified it to suit whatever agenda would get them an audience it got diluted into something so far from yoga that today we are struggling so what happened is instead of getting the western people acculturated they got acculturated to the western people and uh, they tried to uh, dance according to the tune of uh, the, those people there to satisfy the needs of this one so i'm repeating again not to denigrate uh, so many great people but uh, but some when yoga is taken out of the culture the body remains but not the soul so when we chemically examine the dead body and the living body everything would be equal magnesium same content iron same content uh, zinc same content everything is same but what is the difference between these two prana is here prana is not there similarly the yoga without the soul without the prana uh, without the life so a, a, a dead thing is gone is gone it is not an item to be preserved in a box in a museum so it has been packaged that package uh, has been uh, taken to the other uh, cultures so that has uh, happened here uh, two things i borrow from our gurus organic development and inorganic development organic development is the growth into who they can be and the manifesting their best a christian coming to yoga he will be the best christian a muslim coming to yoga he will become the best muslim and we are not changing the the movement to this one see for education there are two things are there education is bringing out the potentials of uh, from inside to out so that is the real uh, purpose of education not dumping uh, uh, information overload so here in the organic development is the real growth but unfortunately inorganic acquisition has been taken place that has become the problem some people come here spend uh, uh, a, a month or so and visiting all the places and uh, so uh, sight seeing re- seeing uh, uh, sight seeing and all and getting a yoga certificate uh, and uh, um, getting that accreditation and going there and uh, selling the product there so mechanically it has become a commodity for sales culturally misappropriated yoga so there is misuse there is uh, misrepresentation there is uh, misunderstanding and misleading the other people also so that is what is happening so there is uh, there are people who start the goat yoga patanjali if we had uh, the head this one uh, i do not know i mean i, I cannot utter the words veer yoga uh, aerial yoga aquin yoga nude yoga cannabis yoga so so many things just you, you, you just type in strange yoga or weird yoga in google you will get hundreds of this type of yogas 
so distorted grotesque activities in the name of yoga total mutation or not mutation mutation is a gentle word um, mutilation occurring in the name of uh, adaptation that's what is uh, uh, happening so just uh, what ha- what has happened is when the sanskrit has been removed it has become a fitness regime like ayoga yoga mrata yoga plastic yoga yoga sans yoga namesake yoga so this is the problem what we are facing even the sanskrit names like adhomukha svasana svanasana so all these terms will have a, a, a dignity a, a, a vibration uh, a, a sense of feeling all these things are there and those have been uh, distorted to such a down, down level that down dog pose up dog pose up dog ki pose or down dog ki pose and even nataraja asana it has become dancer's pose even calling asana itself is a pose it itself is a, such a uh, gross mistake and yoga calling it as union also is not just a simply union it's a total advaita principle um, personified we can say how to replicate and bring traditional yoga alive in the environment cultural context doesn't exist or is seen as a suspect or primitive value may not be put on what is valued here and value may be put on what is not valued here so this is the problem we are facing and uh, glamorization abuse of sacred symbols decorative pieces see these things are becoming decorative pieces like uh, putting the deities on the floor or on the shoes or uh, painting on the shoe or yoga mat see imagine ganesha symbol uh, ganesha picture on the yoga mat or so or uh, putting these things as uh, uh, security people uh, standing there uh, in the five star hotels as uh, the idols there we can uh, see so many things so these people who do not really know about the real value of the yoga that is uh, the our uh, hey then what is the cause for this one what is the hetu the cause is the modus operandi we can say or the the etio pathology so etiology already we have started the pathology what is happening writing that negates or minimizes denies or violates the cultural elements cites the traditional sources only to validate their own sterile model no i i i got a training there under the uh, so and so so and so's name would be used for the name say because because they have registered for this webinar because they have paid some 300 rupees or so i i i, I am the disciple of i am the um, proud disciple of or the uh, so favorite uh, disciple of ananda ji and uh, he start misusing his name uh, and he start selling uh, so this type of thing citing traditional sources only to validate their own uh, sterile uh, model distorts misrepresents reconstructs reconstituted model by misusing sans- sanskrit uh, ideas and tests and uh, rebrands yoga and uh, cites uh, but misrepresents are infantilizes no 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 that old thing patanjali as you know years of uh, uh, so many centuries back and he doesn't know much about yoga now i have refined it uh, like medicine which is improving even the yoga has to be modernized so infantilizing or uh, uh, chiding the traditional things sterile yoga studying and teaching only sterile yoga that denies the cultural context misrepresentation refusing to acknowledge the traditional it is something like plagiarism only not uh, using and uh, negating the traditional epistemic and views tradition as inferior yoga mutations denying the importance of comprehensive holistic learning teaching the trainers a bit of yoga but not the whole yoga and true yoga and obtaining trademarks as if he is the real uh, uh, discoverer or inventor and plastic yoga or uh, artificial yoga misusing and reconstructing sanskrit terms something like neologisms their own words so these are the things what are happening and sacred objects rejecting all the cultural uh, elements and creating objects with nothing in common or at odds and making the replicas disregarding cultural sentiments or so so using the sacred symbols like om also for some other purpose or using uh, the sacred malas also for some purpose or other so this type of things uh, we see 
and charlatans the positioning themselves as the expert authority and misleading the students uh, advocating against the parampara and dharma and violating the yogic norms and principles like uh, yama and niyama and uh, adharmic activity or activism we can see then hana hana what is the what is the relief what we are going to remove and how to produce the cure of that one the hana is yoga in its holistic cultural context is required to be transmitted to the other areas which areas other parts of the uh, world other religions and the modern scientific community and the misunderstood public so these are the uh, cultures which require acculturation which requires the real understanding of what yoga is what is the upaya what uh, what are the strategies which are required uh, to implement this one or uh, to get the benefits or uh, to to get the goal achieved how to replicate and bring traditional yoga alive in their environment cultural appreciation sincere participation in activities of indian culture just indian culture just coming here and spending some time in an ashram or in a, with a traditional guru or so and appreciation of sanatana dharma with humility love and adoration like guru shishya relationship then only they get the respect adoration love and the genuine understanding of this one and the dharma regarding the dharma the radiousness or the right useness right thought right speech and right action as we say manasa vacha karmana so this type of they should get the understanding of this thing not uh, sitting in a vakrasana or bakasana uh, not uh, not this one those are also important not unimportant but before that they should get the philosophy of the spa reaching the ancient and modern representing yoga culture and teaching accurately respectfully with love integrity fidelity and commitment respecting the living and ancestral culture in their work inspiring others to uphold dharma creating works which increase knowledge truth and leading from avijja to vijja and citing the authenticity of this one uh, Um, Maharshi Gitananda has quoted this way, has said that this way, or Patanjali said this way, Swatma Rama said this way. So they they should be in a position to quote that one with humility. Study of yoga, learning yoga and scripture in traditional Guru Shishya context, and uh, studying yoga from primary sources, and uh, with the same respectable approach, and uh, referring uh, the text accurately with uh, authenticity. and teaching the teachers teaching them the holistic cultural context and also inspiring love for yoga and the guide and the teachers to the um, the live yoga through their appropriate role modeling one should be a role model see not just uttering yama and nima and all these things when uh, he is uh, he is living in a uh, very immoral way so that should not be the thing he should be a role model he should be in a position to be emulated to obtain the full benefits of this one the the real model uh, holistic yoga for the students continues the uh, living tradition and the students also will be going to and it is not a two months course or three months course or also so i have seen those who have come to geeta nanda tradition they become lifelong lifelong learners of yoga and so many people 20 years back they have came to i sir and even now also they attend the classes even now also they they enjoy participating in the discussions so that should be the thing it is something like a happy addiction uh, say uh, such sai baba says one thing you should become mad madness of what madness of bhakti bhakti of devotee so uh, uh, deity so he, here here also it is something like yoga should become uh, one should become a lifelong learner the speech sacred speech respects rightly applies and understands the meaning of sanskrit and the yogic terms and uh, it doesn't mean that one should become a sanskrit scholar also at least the basic things the fundamental things how the roots are combining the pre and suffix how the roots are combined to become one one thing or how the uh, the words are formed with the roots 
recognizing the importance of sanskrit in yoga and continuing to learn and grow in understanding the sanskrit the here the philosophy of all yoga is a darshan important very important darshan among the six darshans it is one but nobody no not nobody but 90% of the people consider that it is an exercise only but not a not a darshana sacred objects understanding the meaning of the purpose of the sacred objects and incorporating and rightly using the sacred objects displaying them appropriately and ethically interacting with the people in the traditional way the lineage respecting the traditional system of authority understand the working within the adhikara and exhibiting the integrity and the fidelity and the commitment advocating within the bounds of one's adhikara and see i have been in the field for the past 3 years and 3 and a half years i cannot become an adhikari even though i was uh, in the tradition for 3 and a half years i know my limits i know what i know and one should be aware of the unawareness also so he should know where he is is within his own respecting the other qualified advocates who are present and the guru's approval for whatever one utters and accountability to the authorities and speaking appropriately and consistently so that should be the uh, the ad- advocacy part of it so here the special groups for non indian yoga participants anything extra one is the important thing is language barriers the other thing is lifestyle uh lifestyle like the food habits the drinking and smoking things of that sort sanskrit is not just a language sanskrit is a vibration when yoga terms are used in the divine language that vibration is uh, retained it is that it is supposed to be the dev bhasha so we have to respect it and even sanskrit is found to be a very good language for computer or programming and all because such a such a great language we should give the respect not only empirically but also uh, traditionally language barriers are there between uh, our our indian languages and also for the other uh, people who are coming from the other countries here the languages would have intonation patterns stress patterns of this one for example let us take uh, english language they will have the stress pattern photograph we stress there the four first syllable we say photograph we call but when we say photographer we don't say photographer we say photographer there the the, the stress is on the second syllable when we say photographically we stress on the first syllable and also third syllable photographically photographically so that means when we when we indians speak photographer photograph photographically when we say like that they can't understand because it will be like uh, uh, the gun with uh, bullets like so although we are we, we think that we are speaking so well but it's not so uh, understandable for them so similarly they because of their pattern even our sanskrit also will be a problem for them for example bhajan we know it is bhajan but because uh, when there is no stress pattern for any word they use the first first syllable with the stress bhajan bhajan but instead of saying bhajan they would be saying bhajan and uh, we say pranayama they say pranayama pranayama so because of the stress pattern they are accustomed to it would be a little difficult but it is not a totally impossible thing and once they get accustomed to this one i think the, i i think we can easily uh, make them uh, um, come, come, coming to the this one not saying that the western languages are inferior also they are, they are having such a richness sir. for example certain sounds are there they have got v sound and w sound but unfortunately we have got only wa see v has to be uttered with the teeth touching the lower lip wa 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 water water means one a person who votes water 
whereas w sound we have to put the lips uh, like a circle water water that is a uh, pani uh, our uh, gel so here the the v and w are different but for us both are only wa only so for saraswati we write w but instead we should write v only because saraswati not saraswati it's not so so here uh, certain things we have the lacuna you know, like uh, met we met each we, we met with each other and uh, we have got the yoga mat and uh, he is my classmate my batch mate met mat mate mate of course uh, in american uh, accent uh, we call ma- mate uh, in british accent we say with a diphthong mate but here in uh, in our languages in devanagari we have only one met that is for met uh, mat uh, may mate so for, for everything that only so this is another difficulty even for the fa sound and ph sound also f sound and ph sound also we have got only one fa that means for falguna fa we use the same thing falguna fa that also we say the same thing so here the difficulty comes because of deficits in our language in our scripts of course in our uh, um and certain things people even our indians also feel somewhat uh, difficult to utter like uh, sa sa sha sa as in saraswati sa as in sembu shiva subham and sha as in shah jahan shabnam so here sahasra sirsha purusha but here the problem is when we write this one we write sh for sa and also sha see sha has to be uttered by full retroflex cerebra it has to touch the deeper part of the palate when we say sha whereas for shiva also some people say shiva shiva so it should not be the way but it should be it, it should not be shiva it should be in between shiva so people have to be to to get accustomed to this one i think it it doesn't require more than a few weeks or months to get accustomed to this one even our languages the tamil so rich so ancient language but with very limited uh, uh, letters for kha kha ga ga the same letter so the problem is sethraman uh, sir was telling khandam we say, we people say gandam because we have got kaand ga gandam we say see uh, see certain things like uh, saru lata we call charu lata so the, the differences will be there but that those differences can be ironed out once we sit together and try to um, uh, get the training for the the newcomers from the other countries mantro hinah swarato varnato va micha prayukto na tamardama that means if the mantra is not pronounced correctly it becomes ineffective sometimes it can even destroy the uh, the person or uh, the whole purpose indrajit see one one person he wanted to defeat the indra but he has used the intonation in such a way that he he got defeated by indra because the same word how we use good morning sir good morning good morning say all the three are good morning only but the pattern one is with respect one is indifferent one is reckless so similarly here also in sanskrit we have got so many things like prasva dirga luta udata anudata swarita anunasika even the ordinary word also with nasika and ananunasika so many variants for just a single word so this way each letter could be pronounced at least 18 times so when we go to the mantra yoga or nada yoga or swara yoga i think one one should get the acquaintance of this one and the the one way is diacritics fortunately the diacritics are devised for sanskrit international phonetics sanskrit uh, those uh, 
the society has formed this one where to put upper upper uh, uh, dash or uh, upper uh, uh, apostrophe like thing and the lower dot so all these things would be easily telling that actually i wanted to put all the diacritics in my all the sanskrit terms but it would be hard for the students i thought so i, I have maintained the usual way only the diacritics is uh, the one which uh, can be uh, utilized the lifestyle factors eating beef is a normal thing for uh, some some cultures eating mutton is a normal thing but here yukta ahara viharasya I, it, it, it is not to deny their habits are so but we know about the sattva guna raja guna and the tamo guna and certain things will be influencing the the personality even we practically see when we eat masala extra i think uh, our temperament would be somewhat different when we eat uh, curd rice our temperament would, would be somewhat different similarly uh, uh, foods also and intoxicating substances those will be changing the persons and these things i think once they come to ashram they just become so uh, uh, so says like and they have to live there they have to live there uh, for uh, this for uh, to getting uh, the lifestyle converted and religions so many faiths are there major religions are there but so many faiths are there so many sects are there but uh, for example pranayama is there sagarbha pranayama agarbha pranayama soham without soham so ham so ham so this thing what is the meaning of soham so it is the reciprocal of uh, hamsa what is hamsa hamsa is something about so so and all so no 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 those things those philosophical things we don't want our prana pranayama we know how important that one and how beneficial that one akara ukara makara and how the breathing uh, uh, is uh, associated with this one but omkara so that is that means that is the essence of the hinduism it seems how can we utter that one so we can say that these things these are the symbols which do not have a religious connotation but they have the proven utility even in pubmed you can say you just pranava you can just search in you can find hundreds of things on pranava so it is a scientific thing it's not a religious thing really and uh, surya namaskara yes lord is there but surya is his representative he is giving us energy when somebody says, somebody somebody helps us don't we put namaskar for him similarly sun is helping us we, we put a namaskar to tree we put a namaskar to river we put a namaskar to sun that's all whether you utter the mantras fine if you don't want to utter mantras at least put namaskar to him so pranav chanting instead of om i suggested our guru ji acharya ji whether we can have this type of uh, uh, research in future like instead of omkar japa if we say hallelujah or allah what happens shall we try that one uh, so scientific verification for uh, uh, such things and the name of the lord is whether we call it uh, sri manarayana or uh, shiva or allah or yehova whether you call this as hand or hat or kai or chey whatever you call it it is the same thing so you okay okay you, 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 it, these are all aliases that's all so when we educate them i don't think the people will be so cranky and so stubborn and they will be easily uh, accepting the things and coming to the the third uh, the third category health professionals of uh, modern medicine the physician of modern medicine and a yogi how to get acculturation how to um, get the friendship between these two and all are not, not so having porosan masukritam like born yogi physician like our acharya ji so fortunate to be a yogi from birth and also a physician also from birth because a son of physicians usually they get accustomed to that culture also so we are very fortunate to have a combination of both acharyas physician acharya and yoga acharya but people like me who are physicians first who get lateral entry uh, into the system they naturally 
they will be starting with the acculturation. They, they will be starting with skepticism. Ah, really? Does it your work? Okay, let me do a PhD and see the thing. What happens? I will be doing the true research and I will be putting the thing. Then gradually come to the reality that how great it is and all and uh, uh, gets the acculturation. Similarly, proof of pudding like the challenges are for the health professionals are metaphysical concepts, scientific evidence, compatibility, and acceptance. The metaphysical concepts like, uh, for example, the panchakoshas. Panchakoshas. See, we, we know about only body. We know anatomy and we know physiology. And behind that, psychiatry people say that something like mind is also there. Okay, we accept it. But beyond that one, what are there? Pancha koshas, how, how can we accept when we can't see? Pancha pranas, how can we accept? Upa pranas, what are these? Shat chakras, where are they? And 72,000 nadis. Nadi means, is it a nerve? Is it a vein? Or is it something else? So these are all metaphysical concepts for a modern physician like. So for him, he needs scientific evidence, evidence-based medicine, and uh, randomized controlled studies, double-blind studies, publications in only indexed uh, journals only. We have got a lot, lot of uh, research, hundreds of things. Just you, PubMed is the, is the reservoir of all uh, um, the, um, the scientific uh, authenticated uh, publications. And when we just uh, yoga or yoga therapy, if you key in, you find uh, uh, many hundreds are, if you have many years, thousands of evidence-based uh, uh, articles. Randomized controlled studies, randomization is being done. And a double blind is not possible because yoga therapist would be knowing and a yoga person participant may be knowing and may not be knowing. So this is the thing I think which, can, which we can uh, say about this one. And uh, the compatibility, and another thing is regarding uh, this uh, abstract metaphysical meta uh, things. Acupressure is there. Acupressure reflexology is there. And initially, people were so skeptical. But really, it works. Uh, although they talk about gallbladder meridian, this thing and that thing, and just pressing on the uh, great toe, things, of, uh, things will happen in the uh, uh, brain are pressing here at the ear, something will happen it, uh, in the heart. So th this type of things, one was not believing. But now we believe because those are authenticated and uh, proven. And the interactions, whether there is any interaction between this type of processes and the, uh, the processes, uh, procedures of modern medicine. Whether fitness, somebody having cervical, very bad cervical spondylosis, can he do this one? Any adverse effects? There are a very few papers about adverse effects. And proportional contribution. See, somebody has improved. So who has improved that one? Me with my medicines or a yogi with his asanas and pranayamas? So who will get the credit? So this type of problems will be there for compatibility between these two things. And because of the power struggle or status struggle, what these people, these people, uh, Wow, what did the study? They are coming here and dictating terms to us. No, here it is not the power or status. It is the well-being of the people there. Here, yoga is not going to replace everything. It is an agent for this one, uh, for the modern medicine. Team approach. In the team, so many people will be there. All are important. Of course, the, the physician is the first among the many. And here, the salutogenesis approach, not the pathogenesis approach. So here, the prevention and the promotion, which are uh, propagated. When there is an emergency, okay, uh, modern medicine is of uh, use. I was telling about the analogy of reflexology also, the acupressure and all. So acceptance will not be a problem. Initially, there would be denial. No, 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 nothing is there. Ah, it's all trash. And... Uh, when they are coming to the, the clinics and doing some work, anger initially. And after that, bargaining. Okay, okay, all the psychosis cases I will be dealing only, only neurosis cases and anxiety cases only you take up. So bargaining. And depression. When I treated a depression case with all my antidepressants, not recovered. But when he went to yoga center and within one week, he became all right. So feeling depressed that uh, somebody is doing better work than me. 
and ultimately acceptance so these are the all the stages we see and in the public also mundane expectations cure of incurable and the sports and the indian gymnastics physiotherapy politics and economics skepticism mundane expectations they expect that it should control anger i should not get anger i should become buddha like no no after all we are here we are human beings our human emotions should be there we should get anger like rama 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 doesn't become angry he gets anger one should get this one so totally becoming a inhuman like it is a, it is a, it's a it's not a, 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 an expectation that can be fulfilled total physical strength i should get the full strength or total muscle strength my intellectually deficit uh, disordered person or so called mentally retarded person should become intelligent person enough to uh, crack ias so this type of uh, high expectations and immunity i know a yoga master who has gone to corona wards without wearing even a mask saying that because i am a yoga master i don't get it so that type of uh, things should not be there immunity it improves but uh, one should accept the the reality ah in vibhuti yoga vibhuti yoga so many things are there magical powers you, you try to demolish it or I, i want to get it at any cost you you tell me I, I, as much as uh, you want i pay but i should get the the paranormal powers so this type of mundane uh, expectations we should uh, cut cut them short to uh, the the level and the cure of incurable the cancers yes they, those can be very much helped and uh, they can have the comfortable life and the dementias definitely there are the research is going on and the effect of mantras on the brain alzheimers and omkar japa so these are being proven but it doesn't mean that it totally hurts the thing so we have to accept the thing and the aids he can live longer he can live decades together with good life there and uh, unfortunately the tall talk by immature people no 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 you stop all the medicines you need not take uh, medicines at all and come to me i'll cure this one so we, with this one uh, some people are there some people uh, i think i should not mention the the, the, the sex uh, people of that sort yogopati people come there i have diabetes what is this one so a prescription of uh, two asanas and three pranayams they expect that one these people will give, give and i have got hypertension uh, giving that one so here such a swami ji gitanand swami ji uh, maharshi ji he has developed such a great diagnostic system depending on the all the people every case has to be dealt tailor made so here yoga therapy should not be uh, uh, should not come down to the level of yogopati and that has to be discouraged and in the sports unfortunately it i think better it should be called indian gymnastic rather than yoga because asanas some asanas so the, the person who does who makes who does so much distorted uh, 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 version of the yoga he the champion so the people who are doing meditation the people who are doing pranayama they they can, can they can never be champions of yoga those who live to the expectation of yama and nima 100% they are not yogis according to the 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 asanas principle they are champions but fortunately popularity has been gained for yoga because of the sports thing but this misconceptions about this one that yoga is nothing but asanas it should be removed so every yoga the every sports university should have that uh, uh, the yoga philosophy department after having that uh, that uh, training there only they should enter to the other things in physiotherapy also we we happen to review certain things like uh, say in journals in our journal club. some physiotherapy they put just yoga yoga name say there but there is no yoga there only some physiotherapy technique is there calling prefix of yoga and the misuse of props why should the props be there at all for natural yoga 
when the, when the asana should be a comfortable thing is there a stable thing but physiotherapy department also has brought popularity to yoga by this one again the misconceptions has to be uh, dealt with and politics and business like politics is modi ji has done a lot for uh, development of yoga at the international level so certain people pro modi ji people uh, they, they they give lot of importance for yoga so some people who do not like modi ji they don't like yoga also because he it is promoted by uh, modi ji it is something like uh, saffronization no 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 you yoga we don't like because it is a saffron thing so this type of irrational antagonism so this thing we have to deal with uh, uh, rationally and the business commodity see the so called topakarnam or in telugu we call gunjilu so that topakarnam is a power power yoga in the name of power yoga for 500 dollars they sell in outside countries our guru ji just in youtube if you just follow that video i think you can do wonderfully that power yoga uh, last last two minutes the skepticism yoga is nothing but exercise only why why yoga you, we can go for exercise this type of skepticism ah this crooked posters and all all high crooked posters how can they how, how can they deal with the diseases and with yoga somebody developed some injuries no 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 it is after all a religious fanatism it is a one way of uh, promoting hinduism in the name of yoga it is nothing but a placebo only uh, why why should we follow so this type of skeptics we have to show the the modern evidence this one and one more my suggestion this is my last slide that government should start yoga council of india on par with medical council of india rehabilitation council of india bar council of india yoga council of india why yoga council of india regulation of the professional standards the qualifications and the ethics everybody who attends a certificate course for uh, one month or so he becomes a yoga trainer and he will be propagating the miss yoga to uh, so many other people and uh, licensing the yoga studios whether they have the proper paraphernalia or not what they are really teaching there whether the, they know about all ashtangas or not so this type of thing and every yoga should be adhika adhikari yoga should be part of all disciplines after all it is the moral sense or the ethical sense everybody should have whether he is a medical student or engineering student or uh, some art student in the first year one should have the adhikari yoga yama and neema thing uh, as uh, or in the schools schools it's a moral, moral instruction classes in that this should be there and also adhikari yoga is the prerequisite for the rest of the components for practicing your asanas or pranayamas one should uh, introspect himself where he is as far as the other things are concerned so this is uh, my my request or uh, my my ambition i can say for uh, the uplifting of uh, the yoga to the better the uh, and uh, i think i have crossed my time and uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me this uh, opportunity it is a nice opportunity and thank you all on behalf of spv cider this presentation and this is the end of this one thank you very much once again thank you so much sir excellent excellent presentation very comprehensive and you have uh, brought out the most important aspects of what are the difficulties and what are the solutions what are the methods as you said the chatur vyuha model of heya hetu hana upaya you have applied perfectly in this context and what is the problem what is the cause of the problem where we need to go how can we get there and what are the tools and a very elaborate presentation which i think is the need of the hour and practically you have spoken of all the aspects
how this can be brought into our practice, not just theoretically, what are the difficulties and what we have to be careful of. All of these aspects, and you have covered it so well. I thank you so much, sir, for this beautiful presentation. You are an integral of the Yet at the same time, your status, your elevated capacity as a human being, as a senior for medical, as one of the most notable psychiatrists in India. I think all of these enable us to realize what perspective you have from a very, very elevated place. And I'm sure that all of our participants, all of the participants in this webinar would have enjoyed this presentation. Uh, if you're in a position to put on your videos, I think it would be nice to have a group shot whenever possible. But uh, seriously, uh, always, always a great um, thought process coming from Rama Reddy, sir. It's a blessing to have you, sir, as part of the Saita family. And on behalf of Saita, on behalf of SPV Yoga Mahotsav, we thank you for this presentation. And I would request you, as I'll be requesting Sridhar Raman, sir, to share the PDF of your presentation so that we can share it in our group with all the participants, the registered participants, to help motivate each and every one of us to become a soldier for the cause of yoga in its holistic perspective. We thank everyone for being with us today. And it is very special to have each and every one of you join us for this session. Uh, be with us for the next eight days as we go on this next seven days be with us and let us all come together in a very wonderful sense of yoga itself om sarve bhavantu suginaha sarve santu niramaya sarve badrani pashyantu makaschit dukkha bhag bhavet om shanti 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 hi Oh. As done today, we'll be starting tomorrow at 10.30 sharp. And for those who are not registered participants, I have created a YouTube uh, feed also. You are welcome to share that with others. The idea is not to make money out of this or to be elusive. But those who have registered, we respect them as the Zoom participants. And for others to be part of it and watch it, we would like to share the YouTube video because in the Zoom, you always have a chance to make your comments and in the chat box. And if you have questions, we can always address them. So thank you everyone. Let's have a wonderful